what you gon' do when you ain't got no money? Them foreign cars and all them bitches, they gon' leave you. Only thing you really have is really you. Reality check. It's a reality check. Ooh, it's a reality check. It's a reality check. No, yeah. Court of Appeal, State of California, 4th Appellate District, Division 2. People of the State of California versus Damien Tevis Doster. Reporter's transcript of proceedings. Proceedings had before the Honorable Elios Joe Hernandez, Judge of the Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Riverside, Department 63, December 7, 12 through 14, 18 through 19, 2006, and March 16, 2007. December 7, 2006, Riverside, California. Now, we're switching gears and calling the case of People v. Doster, RIF 125774. Okay, on the Doster case, what are we doing on this case? Well, Your Honor, we're both ready for trial, and it would only be, I don't think Mr. King opposes this request to start jury selection on Tuesday. I know you're off on Monday. So that's fine. Jury selection on Tuesday. So that, but let's do the 402s today. I don't have any. The only 402s we're going to have is probably not going, well, it would be more beneficial to take them as they come. And they're only in terms of a couple of witnesses, essentially. Witnesses who may have privileges. But I think we can work out those privileges. One being the attempt murder victim in this particular case. He's in custody on an attempt murder, Melvin Banks. The other person? There are two victims in our case. Is this a jailhouse deal? No, two victims. One is dead, obviously, and the other is Melvin Banks. He was the victim of an attempt murder. He subsequently got arrested for his own attempted murder case. I have to put him on to talk to him. We need to talk, hash out the parameters. We have to talk to him about immunity. Is he in custody? He is. So he must have an attorney on his attempted murder case. He does. Mr. Banks has his own case and he must have his own defense attorney. He does. Who is that? Well, at one time, it was the public defender's office. I advised them of the conflict. It was Scott Kirkendall, then conflicted out to the conflicts panel. I haven't been told who represents him now. Well, obviously, we need that person. Yes, I'll have that person here. What I believe will happen is Mr. King and I will probably come to some agreement in principle as to the scope. We will talk to Mr. Banks' attorney about it. He'll advise him. We'll stay within the scope of that examination. If it can't stay that way, I'll go back and talk to Allison Nelson and Sarah Danville about use immunity because we need him to testify. That's what I envision on that. There is another witness in custody, Mr. Hodnett, who is an alleged victim of Melvin Banks. How is he relevant if he's in Melvin Banks' case? Because in the event that Mr. Banks perhaps goes sideways, what have you, or testifies inconsistent, which I'm sure he will, it goes to Mr. Hodnett's impeachment evidence. That's what Mr. King would use that for to impeach Mr. Banks. It's impeachment evidence against Mr. Banks. So not related to this case, it's just to bring in he's a bad guy? There's a whole credibility issue. It goes to credibility. Right. Mr. Hodnett has nothing to do with Mr. Doster? No. Interesting stuff. Of course, as you both know, you've done trials in here. I will not keep the jury waiting. If we have to do a 402, tell me in advance and I'll tell the jury to come in late because the last thing I want to do is have a jury standing outside. I've been a juror. I never actually got selected, but standing around outside, you know, they talk. They get unhappy and they're volunteers. What about clothes? Do you have clothes? That supposedly had been taken care of, but I would need an order to dress him out for Tuesday. 
That's always a glitch. Well, I let my person know Monday. The order is for Tuesday at 8.30. If he needs to drop the clothes off, then I have to give him a separate order. The two of you work on that. Where are you? Where do you sleep at night? RPDC. Good. I don't want you transferred out to Southwest or Indio. Scheduling. Okay. Jury at 10 a.m. on 12-12. And how many preempts? Is this life? Yes. 20 each? Yes. It's attempt murder. Is there anything unusual about it? Any twist that might affect jurors other than somebody died? Well, more than one person died, but it's not part of this case. I mean, this is... I don't have any unusual twists. What can I say? They might know the area. And I think there's going to be maybe, maybe some gang implications. Maybe. I don't know what the prosecution is going to pursue in that area. I'm not going to put up any gang expert or have anybody to talk about it. Simply, there is going to be talk about guns. And there's going to be talk about an area in Moreno Valley, which you're probably aware of. The in and out off of Pigeon Pass. Right off of Pigeon Pass as you're going north on Frederick. And you turn right on, I don't know what that street is, I forgot. I know where you are. I mean, just give me an outline. Drug deal gone bad, jealousy, you're in the wrong neighborhood. What was it? Well, it was an argument that went bad between two parties. A party of three and a party of approximately ten. Mr. Doster was part of the party of three that came to in and out an argument ensued between a party that was already there, a party of about 10 at the in and out and the party of three of which Mr. Doster was a member of. A person by the name of Sharif Garrett walked back to his car. He was part of Mr. Doster's party to get a gun. As he was getting a gun, a person from the party of 10 walked over before Mr. Garrett shot him and killed him. That person then turned the gun on Mr. Doster. I don't know where Mr. Doster was, but he shot Mr. Doster, Mr. Doster's friend who was there, Rashim Muslim. It all comes back to me. Then you understand what happened. I got it. So, yeah, I mean, every case is unique, but doesn't have any twisties. Unless they tell me, oh, you know, my sister was murdered, we wouldn't. The gang thing is very peripheral. Right. So I will, of course, you have 10 preempts each, 20 preempts each. And I was just thinking of how many jurors we should order because sometimes you get a number of people I can't serve for whatever reason. I hate to say the 75 word. We don't like to waste jurors. Theoretically, if I'm on the ball, there should only be one or two people left in the audience. I think, Your Honor. I think we should ask for a little bit more simply because of the time of year and time qualify them for maybe three weeks. I think we'll be done before three weeks is over, but just let's get to that right now. How long do you think the trial, what's your best estimate as to how many court days we're going to take? Eight, maybe. Let me see. How about you, Mr. Aki? What do you think? If we start on the 12th, seven or eight, Yes, to the 22nd. Okay. Well, as you can see by the calendar, the times I'm not going to be here. We need time qualifying through the end of December then. I'll qualify them up through January 4. The only problem with all of that is on the 29th, I'm flying out for a month for vacation. For how long? To the 29th of January. I know we can, I don't have... The 21st is when I'm really leaving, but the 21st, 22nd, and 26th are definitely out. And the 11th is out. I'll be in Sacramento. So that's 10 court days. I know I can be done. We'll pick a jury in a day. We can go half day on the 15th. On my witness list, I have about 8 or 9 people, possible 10. Mr. King, after he rests, are you anticipating calling witnesses? 
at least one so just not many right do you know if you would call the defendant that would probably be my one that will take a little bit of time that will take time I'll qualify them through December 29th here is something that will help us out a lot you don't have to but I've done this civil does it all the time and I've done it in about four or five cases I let the jury room qualify the jurors for time they're pretty tough even if they are close they say you'd better talk to the judge if you want that then you don't have to spend time on the time qualifying aspect and then you have only the other issues that any juror might have do you want to do that okay that's fine that's fine with me on the 29th I am NOT I don't remember but if it's never mind we're not going to be here on the 29th doesn't matter I'm hoping we're done on the 19th I think we can be I have to qualify them a little bit longer I'll be off on the 26th some other judge can take a verdict well if you time qualify them through the 28th but tell them with the understanding we probably will be done around the 19th some other judge could take the verdict and I will have judge Webster he'll be my backup so while I'm on vacation I'm available by phone but he can handle everything Webster has been a judge for 15 years he knows everything there is to know about criminal law and you're both very familiar with him would that be okay with you yes yes I don't want to hear I was at a baseball game or anything like that we are in agreement in advance on that how many time qualified bodies do you want I'm thinking 60 if they're already time qualified probably be okay it's going to be close 70 yeah you know we have guidelines for selecting jurors and because we use a lot of jurors for example in my last trial I had a juror who had been 14 months ago right in this very same room we're using too many jurors for our resources so there are people in the chain of command who are keeping tabs on how many jurors you don't use and I don't want to be known as a wasteful judge okay so attorneys said we'll go with 70 I'll get it set up so let me write that down we'll go basically 9 30 to 4 30 every day except for the first day when we start at 10 okay we've got that done next I'll prepare a questionnaire and the questionnaire you've both seen my questionnaire we want to put it's murder there's firearms but I don't think we need to put anything in about gangs well they refer to each other by monikers some people do there are some tattoos it's not charged how about Top Gun everybody has got a nickname well your honor what I'm saying I'm not intending on using it for any purpose there will be mention of it but I'm not drawing any inference from it and I agree it's not completely relevant but there are going to be in the interview in the surrounding circumstances there's going to be an implication that it may have been gang related I mean either the cops are going to say it or the jury is going to get that just from the circumstances of the offense at least we need to address it somewhat I will put something in there about it so that's the questionnaire next we have jurors questions this is Calcrim 106 you've been following the Daily Journal the Judicial Council was going to vote mandatorily that jurors could ask questions we have no discretion of course as chair of the CJA on behalf of all judges to bring up the fact how about a death penalty case how about a 288 with a four-year-old witness I don't know I don't think so some juror wants to ask some embarrassing question I'm going to say no so it won't end up discretionary but Calcrim 106 already covers the subject I want to know how you two feel I don't like jurors asking questions 
That's my personal preference, but that's my take on it. Mr. King, I don't have an opinion one way or another. I've had good questions. I've had bad questions. I've done it before. I don't have a real problem with it, but I'll leave that up to the court. Okay, since that rule won't take effect until next year, my practice is unless I get both attorneys to agree, I won't do it. So on this one, I don't have both attorneys. Okay, so we go to 9.30 to 4.30 every day except for the first day when we start at 10. When are we going to have Melvin Banks here with his attorney? I'll have him here hopefully December 13th. I'm looking him up. I'd also like to ask because Mr. I was not aware of Mr. Banks's case here and Mr. Doster is here. I'd like to have at least security or at least the sheriffs know that they got to be kept apart. What's Banks's first name? Melvin. Let's take a short break. I'm going to walk over to 61. See you back here in about five or 10 minutes. And I think a personal view would be better than calling. We're back in session in the case of People versus Doster. Mr. Aki, what did you find out? I found out that Mr. Leonard Valadez currently is Mr. Banks's attorney, and it looks like he'll be here on the 13th as well. I told him that we would probably meet at about 8.30 in the morning here to discuss Mr. Banks's situation and his testimony as a victim. He understood. There's no problem. I will talk to my client and Brian, and I really have to hammer out some of the details. So schedule Mr. Banks, his case to be here on that date. That will get him in here. And so you informed Mr. Valadez? Yes. So we'll have Mr. Banks here on the 13th, and of course you'll have extra security because the two shouldn't meet each other upstairs or down here. We talked briefly. We may be able to shorten the witness list and handle some of them by stipulation. Okay, so we've gone over. Let's see 402 regarding Malvin Banks. The 13th is Wednesday, 1213 at 830. Banks attorney equals Leonard Valadez. Got that out of the way. We talked over. It's going to be Calcrim's. Calgic had its day. It's Calcrim now. And if you don't have a form, we'll give you a form. So you can bring in your requested jury instructions for me Tuesday is good because it has to be typed up by a secretary. I'm trying to think about what other things we need to discuss. Jurors will be here Tuesday morning at 10. Questionnaire. I'll give them a welcome speech. Explain how things go, give them a couple instructions, but I will print out those instructions and the questionnaire this morning. When would you like to come back to give me feedback on the questionnaire? This morning. Tomorrow I'm not here. So you're going to print out the questionnaire? I'll have it done by 11. Sure, that's fine. I can come back at 11. Be back at 11. I'll have it all printed out. And at that time, you can give me some suggestions for changes. Okay. Is there anything else we want to talk about? Do you do a six pack or I don't remember the new way. So of course we have the 14 in the box and then I've been going with 10 in the audience. So recently I've been going with 30. It works good when you only have 10 preamps. You're done. You don't have to have a second round, but 20. That makes it a little bit different. We have two pieces of paper, one for the people in the box, which is 14 people, and then one for the 16 in the audience. So that's actually easier as opposed to having 24 on one piece of paper. That's fine. Actually, that's kind of nice. You know, all the people here and available, that's fine. So you have 16, it's five, five, and six. And you have a chart, one for the people in the audience and one for the people in the box. I'm willing to try anything. Good. But you know, once you get through the process, I believe you can actually have a better view of what's there and what's not. I agree with that. A couple alternates, two alternates. That should be enough, right? Let's just say in my previous job, I had a lot of ideas scary when you have so many ideas and i have that same issue here you got to go little steps at a time 
I will probably just to advise the court and counsel. I mean, so he prepares probably voir dire on race. I mean, that's always an issue because the defendant, of course, African American, I will be voir direing on race. Thank you. That's one of the other things I like to bring up is that the defendant is a black person and Wheeler is the California case about using preemptory challenges to kick certain groups off of a panel. And then Batson and Kentucky et al. are federal cases that have an even stricter rule. The way I like to handle that is if you kick a person that would be a cognizable group, I would, I may ask you for a voluntary explanation as to why you did that. Is that at sidebar? It's out of the presence of the jury. It's only on motion of one of the other parties. For instance, if Mr. King kicks a person of cognizable group, not that he would for any other illegitimate purpose, and I agree with it, we don't have to explain that then, right? There's two parts to it. There's me asking you for a voluntary explanation. Neither party has brought it up, and I'm making no finding. I'm just asking. Then there's the next stage where one of you wants to bring it up. I thought it was the reverse. Then there's the situation where I didn't say anything, but one of you says, I think this is a Wheeler situation. Then of course I excuse the jury and we go through the process. But even if the two of you agree, I think it needs to be on the record. It needs to be on the record because if there's a conviction, the two of you aren't going to be the ones handling it. It will be somebody else second guessing everything you did and I did, but it's better to put things on the record and to be careful. I believe it's deemed to be waived by both parties. If neither party objects to it, he may have his reasons, I may have mine. He kicked someone or I kicked someone and we're like, that's cool. And then we move on. I can understand the voluntary explanation by either party as to the reason for the kick separately. But I believe that we're still well within the parameters of Wheeler Baston and the other cases that follow. If a party does feel that there might be Wheeler conduct here that we say, Your Honor, I'd like to speak sidebar, jury is excused, we go in the back and you can say, I'd like to see a voluntary statement. At that point, if we give the voluntary statement, and if you don't feel we met the prima facie case, and you feel there is one, then we move on there. But to give an explanation for everyone, we kick from a cognizable group. I guess you took me wrong. I say, I may ask you. I took it wrong then. I want you to have your reasons in mind, just in case I ask you later. After three hours of jury selection, somebody brings it up, I want you to have it fresh in your mind why you kicked that person. Gee, I can't remember. That was three hours ago. I don't want, if I don't say anything and neither one of you, it never becomes an issue. And I can only remember two trials in this whole year where it's been brought up. So it's not like something that happens frequently, but I just want you to be alert so nobody is surprised. Anything else we want to talk about? No. See you at 11. Mr. Doster, see you at 11. We're in session in the case of People v. Doster, RIF 125774. Go ahead and sit down. We have Mr. King here and Mr. Aki, and I provided you with a proposed questionnaire and some jury instructions I'm going to propose to read before you get a chance to voir dire. It's part of my introduction, and I want your input on those things, Mr. Aki. I have no objection as to any of the documents or proposed questions and or Cal Crims that you are intending to read to the jury, particularly the one about the in custody, the 337 witnesses in custody if physically restrained. I'm just assuming if they're in custody, they're going to come in in orange. I don't plan on dressing my witness out. And Mr. King, comments that you have? Your Honor, the only comment I would make in terms of the juror questionnaires, and I just looked it over very quickly, is the court going to ask the prospective jurors, this is a murder case? Are you going to ask questions about murder, things like that, and also guns? I just didn't see any questions like that on the questionnaire. 
I saw the gang. I thought I had it on there. I may have just missed it. You know what? I had it on my draft. Thank you. So I'm going to add in, do you own any guns? Do you have any special training in guns? It was on my draft and I'm glad you caught that. Now the other one, question seven, have you been a victim or witness in any crime? If when I tell them what the charges are, if anybody has a relative, they speak up. So I'll add the thing about, do you own a gun or are you familiar with guns? Do you have any special training in guns? Okay. With those additions, how are you? I think it's fine. Anything else we need to discuss? I think the only thing is if the defendant does testify, I know Mr. King has given a preliminary indication that the defendant may testify. If he does, at that point in time, the defendant has a couple of prior criminal contacts, including a prior for a 273A. I will be seeking to introduce that for impeachment purposes. And I have to, again, take a look at his record to see if there are any other impeachment type moral turpitude information. On the information, it indicates 1667.5B, 273A, and do you want to bifurcate that? For now, Your Honor, yeah. So where this is all leading to is, Mr. Doster, if you're not convicted, it doesn't make any difference. But if you're found guilty, somebody has to make the decision whether that prior offense is true and it's you. It could be the same jury, it could be the court, or you could admin it. Those are the three ways this can happen. So I'll ask you, probably next week, which way you want to go. I'll also give you an answer to a 12021 that's filed with that. Let me look at that information more closely. I don't see it. It's not on my information. I have it on the information. Unless you got a different version. I have an information and there is a 12021 on there. Okay, if this is the information we're operating on, I'll bring back my information. I'm probably, I saw the 12021. Be here at 10 to 12. Okay, if not, I'll call Jill, but I'm pretty sure. We want to make sure we're working on the same information. This just says information not amended. So I'll see you at 10 to 12. Thank you. December 13, 2006, Riverside, California. Back in session in the case of People v. Doster. And no jurors are here, but the defendant and the attorneys are here. What are we talking about? Good morning. One of my witnesses is Melvin Banks. He is a victim of the attempted murder in this case. Mr. Banks is expected to testify. However, about a year later, he picked up his own case, an attempt murder with another person by the name of Hodnett. That murder has, or attempted murder, has nothing to do with this case. I provided the reports to Mr. King. It's actually an assault on Mr. Hodnett's father, and apparently Mr. Banks is alleged to have participated in that. Mr. Banks, my position is that Mr. Banks does have a Fifth Amendment privilege and Mr. Valadez will be here shortly, but my argument to the court would be that we should limit it because the attempted murder has nothing to do with ours. It's not relevant. I'm sure he could probably be asked, wasn't it true you have been arrested for an attempted murder on this day? He can answer that, yes. But anything else beyond, that would be not only irrelevant, but a privilege. A privilege not to testify. I told Mr. Aki, I don't want to have a major problem. I do expect he'd say he's in custody for an attempted murder, and the weapon allegedly being a knife in that particular case. And I suspect he'll probably admit that. I don't know why he wouldn't. Well, if you use the word alleged, he wouldn't have any reason not to admit it. That I understand. Of course, if he denies it, then we run into some problems, but where is Mr. Leonard Valadez? I checked over there this morning. He knows about this because we talked about this last week. Is Melvin Banks here? Yes, he is. He was just over in 61. That was about 10 minutes ago. That's the only issue I believe we have this morning. 
we're talking about the scope of cross-examination. Right, let's wait a moment. Hopefully Mr. Valdez will be here. Have you gone over the photographs, Mr. King? I'm going to do that right at this moment. Just for the record, Mr. King has been provided with all the photographs on a digital disc. I like it better when, you know, the attorney, whichever side, is showing a photograph and says, let me show it to counsel. If you showed it ahead of time, that's not necessary. Mr. King is looking through the photographs and some of them are gruesome. And for the purpose of that, the DA needs to show the angle of the man can be better. We discussed that because the autopsy photo, you can't tell it's a human being in the autopsy photo. Hand those to the deputy. I want to look at them. That is the only one that's bad. I think it's people 72. Hello, Mr. Valadez. Can you bring out Melvin Banks? I'd like to see if we can keep as much as possible the defendant and Mr. Banks separated. What do you mean? He's not going to sit next to him. Perhaps Mr. Valadez can go in the holding cell and talk to him. Go ahead. I was thinking Mr. Banks should take the stand and find out if he's going to take the fifth. I figure he probably wants some privacy when he talks to him. Your Honor, while we're here, I'd like to make a motion that Investigator LeClaire be designated as the People's Investigating Officer and be allowed to sit here at council table next to me. So ordered. Thank you. Having looked through all the photos, my comments are that there's one that shows a dead person laying on the ground. You've got four or five of those. They all seem sort of the same thing. And then this number 72, which the purpose is to show the path of the bullet. You can't tell this is a human being. It just lacks dignity, in my opinion. I'm not saying you can't use it, but it certainly would be better if you had a mannequin or if the people at the autopsy had realized this is just not for jurors who don't normally see autopsies are going to look at the photos and this sort of thing. It might have been difficult to show the path with the body still clothed, but I too, on my own accord, feel that's probably not appropriate. I wanted to bring that to the court's attention. I was going to introduce evidence of path projectile and rather, or in lieu of showing that photo, Perhaps we could have the coroner diagram the path or the path of the projectile. Have you had the time to talk to Mr. Banks? Yes, I need to talk to Mr. Aki for a moment. A few more seconds, Your Honor. Back to the photographs. I'm hoping the DA and defense counsel can get together on the ones with the person laying on the ground. Looks like it is five or six photos of the same thing. If you need them, you need them but they seem to me to show all the same thing. Actually, they're from different angles. There are footprints and things you can see. Those are the, at first blush, as you're looking at it, they appear to be the same, but as you look at the different angles, the footprints, the blood prints, they're not particularly gruesome. If they show something different, that's okay. They're not cumulative. The other one is, I already said the other one where it basically looks like a rib cage in a meat shop with a rod through it. We already told the jury there would be gruesome photographs, but that one is, it's not just the gruesome part of it. I've seen worse, but it's the undignified. That was a human being at one time. Maybe I'm projecting my own sensitivity and maybe the jury isn't that sensitive, but that's something for the two of you to consider when you get to the time where you're going to show that. I certainly don't plan on using it. Well, I believe the photograph is relevant, I'm more than willing to see if Mr. King will stipulate to allow Dr. Fajardo to draw a diagram of the path of the projectile so I don't have to show that photo. That's pretty ordinary to have that type of thing. I would think the doctor would have that prepared in advance. I don't want to see him drawing it up here. As a forensic pathologist, he should already have at least a small part of it. If you want to use the mannequin because showing the path of the bullet, of course, that is relevant. No doubt about that. But maybe, maybe in a more or less graphic way. The mannequin we use over there, they've been used for so long, the stuffiness falling out in certain places, and people might get the wrong idea. Are you ready, Mr. Valadez? 
Yes. How do we want to proceed? Bring him to the stand? To see how he's going to answer questions, that would be the ordinary manner. I wanted to understand the parameters. Basically, my indication is that, and in relation to his case, counsel is going to be able to ask him if he's been arrested for attempted murder. And they can ask him, has the district attorney offered you any kind of plea deal or any promise of leniency regarding your case? And other than those two questions, he's not to be asked anything at all regarding any kind of involvement about his pending case or he'll take the fifth. And Mr. King wanted to go one step further. He wanted to say, not really. That's what you told me a little while ago, Mr. King said, and isn't it true you allegedly used a knife? I said he's going to take the fifth. He's not going to answer any other questions about his case. Okay, let's bring him out here because he's got to know what we're doing. Go ahead and put him on the stand, Kyle. Do you state that the evidence you shall give in the matter pending before this court shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. Please state and spell your full name for the record. Melvin, M-E-L-V-I-N, last name Banks, M-E-L-V-I-N-B-A-N-K-S. Thank you. Mr. Banks, standing next to you is Leonard Valadez to give you advice should you need any, and that's fine if the two of you want to confer about anything. The reason we're here, no jury is here, obviously, and we're going to ask you a few questions about to get the parameters of what you're going to be asked when the jury does get here, and we want to make sure we're all on the same page. So Mr. Aki, you can give him the parameters of what things you're going to ask. Melvin Banks, called as a 402 witness by and on behalf of the people, having been first duly sworn, was examined and testified as follows. Good morning, Mr. Banks. How are you doing, sir? I'm basically going to ask you about the shooting that occurred at In-N-Out on September 3rd, 2005. Mr. King will tell you what he's going to ask you, but basically you're going to be asked about the reason why you're in custody, that you were charged and you've been arrested for an alleged attempt murder involving you and a person by the name of Mr. Hodnett. Is that right? Yes, sir. And I don't believe we're going to plan, nor should you talk about the facts of your, of the reason why you're in there other than you've been charged. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. And the questioning will simply be, Mr. Banks, is it true that you've been arrested for an attempted murder and that's why you're in custody? Yes, sir. And that attempted murder happened on whatever date it did. Is that right? Yes, sir. You'll also be asked if you've been offered any leniency, any plea deals by myself to testify here in this case? No, sir. That's it. We need to go one step further. Has any DA offered you anything at all in return for your testimony? No, sir. Any police officer? No, sir. Mr. King, did you have some questions? Well, just to indicate, I'm going to ask him the question, isn't it true? Mr. Banks, good morning, by the way. How are you doing? Good, thank you. That you are in fact in custody charged with attempt murder and the weapon being an alleged knife, correct? I take the fifth. And so there we come again. And there's the rub. Obviously the first question, aren't you in custody because you were charged with attempt murder and you have to give the date to or something to distinguish it from the attempted murder that we're trying in this case. So it's clear it's not the same crime. But the next, the follow-up question or the addendum to the question, isn't it true that you used a knife? He's going to take the fifth. So do we need, so that's the problem. Right. My point on the knife is that it has no relevance to this case because the shooting here is a gun that was used in both murders. The first murder that occurred of Sharif Garrett and the second one, Damon Mabins. There's no allegation of a knife used. So asking him that question has no relevance to the proceedings. The fact that he's been arrested for an attempted murder, I believe is sufficient. So where we're at right now, is there any other questions other than this knife question, which would be issues we need to discuss? Not concerning his current offense, so...
so we don't need to. Yes, he'll be my first witness. You can take Mr. Banks. Did you have any questions of your attorney? If I may, just a minute or two. I've never met Mr. Banks. I'd like to introduce myself and tell him when I prep my witnesses, this is what I said. I need you to tell the truth, but I'd like to do that personally if I could. Okay, so for right now, we don't need you. We'll call you back a little later this morning for the testimony and Mr. Valadez will be here. As much as I can, I have prelims set today. If there's anything that, if he's not here and anything comes up you think you need to talk to him about, turn to me and let me know and we'll take a break. Any more questions, Mr. Banks? That's it. So Mr. Aki wants to chat with you. That's fine. You guys can work out. Kyle, work it out. We'll be in recess. See you back at 925. And that question for the knife, that's prohibited. So at 925, if you want to make a record about it, you can. Okay. We're back in session without the jurors. And based on the 402 hearing we had about Mr. Melvin Banks, I ruled that the defense could cross-examine him on, you were arrested, you're in custody because of an attempt 187. And then the defense wanted to ask, and isn't it true that you also, that it's alleged that you used a knife? And then he would take the fifth if that question was asked. So I ruled you couldn't ask the question. And do you want to put anything on the record? Just that, Your Honor, the form of the question just asked for, basically it's public on the record. He's not incriminating himself. I'm asking an alleged knife was used and I believe that's what he's charged with. So there's nothing incriminating asking that question, yes or no, whatever it is. It's public record, public knowledge. I could ask the court to take judicial notice of that fact. So there's really nothing incriminating about that particular question. Mr. Aki? I believe it has no relevance to this case anyway. I mean, what you want to get out is a moral turpitude type crime he's being charged with. And although he does have a Fifth Amendment privilege, it speaks for itself. It's an attempt murder. I need not say anything more about it. I think Mr. King has a good suggestion. As opposed to him answering, I could say, I'm looking at the court docket and he was charged with what he was charged with, which is a public record, and that would avoid his Fifth Amendment issue. Rather than ask the witness that, maybe you could take judicial notice of it later that he's been charged. Yes. After the witness has left the stand and all that. Just so I'm clear, I'm going to ask him whether or not he's in custody on an attempt murder case? Absolutely. I just want to be clear. Just the knife question won't be asked to him. You can take judicial notice. After he's done on the stand, remind me and get me the case print on Mr. Melvin Banks and I'll say it right then and there, that I've taken judicial notice of the fact that in case such and such, Mr. Banks was charged with whatever it was. Would that be okay? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. Are we ready to go? Yes. No formal opening. Bring in the jury and we'll get started. We have a sick juror. We'll bring him in. Mr. Blair, you're one of our jurors. My clerk tells me you're not feeling well. Tell me what your status is. Yesterday when I was in the courtroom, I was not feeling real well. I had major heart surgery, major lung surgery. One part of my lung is removed emphysema and all kind of troubles and I'm disabled but I think I come down with some type of intestinal flu within the last couple weeks. Yesterday I was sitting in here sweating and I went to the bathroom. I threw up really bad. I went to the doctor two days ago and he says he made an appointment for tomorrow. I'm supposed to be at the doctor's and let him decide what goes on with me but I'm not feeling well at all and I'll be glad to bring a note from the doctor if I can do that. I don't think I'll be able to sit through this. Here's the bottom line. You're not feeling well. Will that prevent you from paying attention and concentrating? I couldn't concentrate yesterday either. I was really sick. Questions, Mr. Aki? I did notice Mr. Blair laboring back there. I wasn't sure why. I can notice he's perspiring quite a bit just observing him, and I'm sorry for that. And I would say that I thank Mr. Blair for his candid remarks and I would submit. Mr. King, what time is your doctor's appointment tomorrow? It's at 2.30 to see my own personal doctor. Do you think you just need a day or? 
I don't know because I think I came down with the intestinal flu. It's really progressive. I run to the bathroom throwing up in these things. And like I say, yesterday I couldn't concentrate. I couldn't think I was trying to read this thing. I couldn't see. As opposed to, well, compare yesterday to today. How do you feel? I'm doing a little better. I'm afraid I might start doing that again and I wouldn't be able to think and concentrate. Have you been getting better progressively? This happened within the last month and I have to see the doctor tomorrow and let him decide what's going on because, but you feel better today than you did yesterday? Much better. I've been taking Alka-Seltzer and everything trying to feel better. Like I said, I could get a note from the doctor. I have no further questions. Do you want to discuss it first? I do think so, yeah. Wait outside. We'll talk it over with the attorneys for just a second. Wait outside. We'll talk it over with the attorneys for just a second. The reason I know why Mr. King, he's a black person, and we made an issue of being careful, and the final jury had three black people on it. It would still have two if we dismiss Mr. Blair, and I think that it's important that we put on the record because that was the final outcome after we discussed the Wheeler-Baston issue. And then another black person came up and Mr. Aki left him on. So we ended up with three blacks. He says he's 66 and can't concentrate. And what's your suggestion? My suggestion, Your Honor, is that we go ahead and bring him back tomorrow, that we adjourn for today if we need to cut out a little early for his doctor's appointment. That's fine. We can do that. But one, I don't want to lose a juror, any juror at this early stage, because it cuts into our alternates. But two, I don't want to lose this particular individual for the reasons that the court stated. So it's twofold. I still think even if we do that today, we'll still be on track. I don't think we're going to jeopardize our schedule at all. So that's my request. Mr. Aki, your comments? I find it difficult to comprehend that we want to keep a person because he's black. We want to keep them because they're fair. We don't want to keep him because they're black. That's the reverse of what we're talking about in Wheeler. The guy is sweating profusely. He's over there yesterday, and I think if we go back over his questions, he was laboring, and I believe he's telling the truth. I don't see keeping a person here when they're sick and can't concentrate. is something that the court really wants to do. He's suggesting we take today off. I got all my witnesses. I have a witness out of state that's flown from out of state. I have the witnesses lined up. We have jurors all sitting here ready to go, but we spend a considerable amount of time and money to be here and this trial should be done by the 18th or 19th. That's not a very long period of time. I think, here's what I'm concerned with for example. Juror number five, five or six, the young lady, she's got to be done by January 2nd. She's got to go back to school. If we go longer than we said, it will be a problem. And it's not just today. We don't know how he's going to recover. He has to go see a doctor at 2.30 and the traffic is so bad that you can't go to a doctor's office, wait and be back in a timely manner. So we'd be wasting at least a day, might be losing at least a day and a half. And I don't think there's any Wheeler Baston issue here at all. And I'm going to excuse him. You've already said your part for the record and we're going to go forward with one alternate. First alternate will become the juror, and the second alternate becomes the first alternate. Welcome back, everybody. As you might notice, we're missing number seven. That's Mr. Blair. He was just in fear he wasn't feeling well yesterday and not feeling well today, and he's got a doctor's appointment. We do that balancing act, whether we take a day off and go forward, and that's why we have alternates. Alternate one, you are now number seven, so move down. The books are numbered. Alternate number two, move over. You're alternate number one. Okay, jurors, get good rest, drink a lot of liquids, take your vitamin C, and stay healthy. Now, we're at a stage of the proceedings where the attorneys can present their opening arguments, and the DA gets to go first. Are you prepared? I am, Your Honor. You may give your opening statement. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Would the defense like to present an opening statement at this time? Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. You may proceed. You can go home, leave your books there. Don't talk about the case. Be back tomorrow at 9.30. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Aki, tell us what your schedule is for tomorrow. Who do you have? I have Dr. Fajardo, Deputy Aaron Wolf, and Deputy Mike Elliott, and Investigator LeClaire. Just to clarify a couple of points made by Mr. Banks, and I believe I probably will be resting. Okay, so Mr. King, besides the defendant, are you planning on calling anybody else? Not at this time. So actually, what I was thinking, tomorrow is Thursday. Yes, we'll finish up Thursday maybe, if there's time. We'll get started, finish up on Friday, and have instructions and closing arguments by Monday. And then the jury is deliberating on the 18th or the 19th. I know both of you are very busy on Friday, but it's, I don't want to take a chance on not getting done. May I make a suggestion? If we could, I believe if we, by the time I get through my portion and Mr. Doster, probably late tomorrow, I would ask if we could do the jury instructions maybe Friday sometime so we could get through them. Monday, come back and instruct and argue and not go all day Friday if that's possible. I just said 9.30 to 12.30 on Friday. That's not all day. Here's a suggestion for you, Your Honor. Once we get through the prosecution case tomorrow, I suggest that will probably be made afternoon. I think what we could do is use the time between then and 4.30 to maybe go over our jury instructions and then come back for Mr. Doster in closing. The defendant? I don't think it will take more than a morning. We'll be done on Monday sometime. I don't see Mr. Aki saying yes. I don't see him saying no. I suspect that I'm fairly accurate in my estimation. That's fine. Half day tomorrow, then go with the instructions the rest of the day. I'm thinking that, I'm thinking keep on working. We're going to go all day, witnesses all day. If we don't finish up tomorrow, the question is, should we do the witness Friday morning, which I told the jury we'd do, or Monday morning as Mr. King is suggesting. I'm still leaning toward Friday. No chance that this is going into Christmas because we have that one lady who's got the school that she's worried about. And we've got a judge who is planning on not being here. There's no chance of going into the 19th. I'm pretty sure about that. Right. And I think either we use tomorrow afternoon or Friday to finalize the jury instruction. I think we're... I think that would be an efficient use of our time, the court's time and the juror's time for that matter. So we don't have to either do it early Friday morning before Mr. Doster is done or whatever the case may be. I don't see us, I don't see it being a delay actually. I think we're going to need a little bit of time to go over the jury instructions. Although I don't think it's going to be a whole long time and we got to do it before we close. I'll think about it. See you tomorrow morning, 925. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah.